to show ads or to not show ads? That is the question. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not how that goes. Eh, they should probably update that play anyway. Welcome back to the Optimize Your App Revenue series. In the last episode of the series, we covered how to A-B test different ad frequencies to optimize your app revenue while maintaining user retention. That's a pretty cool topic. But what if you haven't started showing any ads in your app in the first place? Making the decision to start showing ads in your app can be daunting. For one, you don't want to risk alienating your users who have gotten used to an ad-free experience. And depending on the flow of your app, you also want to make sure you're only showing an ad at the right time, or maybe more importantly, not showing ads at the wrong time. To show too oft seen ads can cost us more than ever dreamed a fate we must avoid. For lost users is not what wanted thee. Thankfully, the framework of products to optimize your app revenue can help us figure this out. By the way, if you haven't checked it out already, episode one in this series introduces the framework of products and the experimentation methodology we'll use to solve our app and ad revenue experiments in each episode, including how to configure your app with each product in the framework. You don't need to check it out right this instant to follow along with the rest of this episode, but if you want to implement today's ad test as you follow along, check it out to get your app configured and ready to go first. Otherwise, stick around for the rest of this episode and you can check out episode one a little later. Okay, let's get back to our problem. So we know what we want to solve. We want to figure out if we should show ads in our app and the impact of that if we haven't been showing them already. Now let's look at figuring out a solution. First thing to do is to design the experiment. Okay, so you may recall in episode one that in order to create and test different ad experiments in this series, we need to use an experimentation methodology which generally consists of A-B testing. So essentially given two variants A and B, which one will perform better given some key metric we care about? For a game, that might be something like creating a game variance with different levels of difficulty to figure out which one keeps users most engaged. Now you might also recall that A-B testing works best when you can hypothesize that one variant could perform better than another based on that key metric. Like in the game example, it makes sense to hypothesize that there is an optimal game difficulty for the most user engagement. Or in the case of our last episode in the series in ad frequency experimentation, we hypothesize that there's an optimal ad frequency that could lead to the highest ad revenue, while also minimizing any impact to user retention. So for the problem we want to solve today about whether we should show ads in our app or not, how can we use the same experimentation methodology to design our experiment? Well, the answer is we can't. But don't worry, there's a different approach we can take using the framework that will help us solve this problem for us. But let me take a moment to explain why we can't use A-B testing here, because this could be important for different kinds of ad tests you might be considering to run for your app. So let's say I was going to use A-B testing to solve today's problem. I would start with defining the key metric we want to optimize for, which let's say is ad revenue. So my hypothesis would be that one of my experiment variants, that is the variant that shows ads and the variant that doesn't show ads, could lead to the most ad revenue. Well, obviously the variant that show ads will always outperform the variant that doesn't show ads. A-B testing won't really be able to help me determine a leader there since the winner is 100% clear before I even start the experiment. Now let's say I use user retention as a key metric instead, and I start with the hypothesis that there is one variant that will lead to better user retention. User retention as a key metric makes a bit more sense, since the main thing we're worried about is users not responding well to showing ads, which could lead to them not sticking around in the app. But in this case, it's the hypothesis itself that's really weak. Using whether or not we show ads as a driving factor to determine what leads to optimal user retention doesn't really make sense. And Firebase A-B testing won't be able to make really great conclusions about that test data. Compare that to trying different app layouts or app themes or colors with the goals of increasing user retention. These are premises that do make sense because better suited or more engaging theming in our app could definitely help with user retention and comparing alternatives to see which works best makes sense. 
These are tests that A-B testing can help us out with. But figuring out if we should show ads or not, A-B testing won't really work there. So how can we test and validate whether showing ads in our app is a good idea? Well, thankfully, the framework can still help, except now we'll just use Firebase Remote Config, Google Analytics, and of course, Google AdMob to set up and safely evaluate the ad experience before we decide to roll it out more widely. The way this setup will work is instead of creating different ad experience variants and A-B testing them, we'll just use Remote Config to show ads to a small portion of our audience and not to the rest of them. Then using Google Analytics, we'll analyze the results of the two user groups, those who have been shown ads and those who haven't been shown ads, and see if there has been any meaningful impact on user retention. Before getting into more details on this approach though, you might be asking yourself, what if some users like ads and some users don't? Isn't there a way to decide to show ads on a per user basis? And the answer is that there is. Using the new Firebase Remote Config personalization feature launched into Alpha at the last Google I.O., we're going to do a full treatment on how to personalize the ads experience in a future episode, but if you want to get started on using a more personalized approach right now, you can sign up for the Alpha program to try it out. The link is in the description. For now, let's take a deeper look at the approach we can use with Remote Config and Google Analytics. So first for Remote Config, which if you recall, allows you to create key value pairs in the cloud that you can push out to your end users app instances with different sets of values based on different specified conditions. The way we're going to use Remote Config now is to set a key called show ads, which will have a value of false for say 90% of our users and true for a randomly selected 10% of our users. Now let's talk about how Google Analytics fits into the picture. So one helpful feature in Google Analytics is the fact that it allows us to create audiences or segments based on all kinds of conditions, like audiences that triggered specific events, or audiences who fit a specific user property, or audiences based on demographic data, and a whole lot more. So using Google Analytics, we can create a specific audience for those users who have been viewing ads, and another for those who haven't. Then using some advanced features in the Google Analytics console, we can slice, dice, and more importantly, segment that analytics data to get some insights on how the ad experience has been received by our users. And more importantly, how the data compares to users who aren't receiving ads. We'll take a look at what that kind of analysis looks like in the Google Analytics console when we get to the analyzing the results segment of the episode. And finally, the last part of the framework we'll need is Google AdMob, which is what we'll use to implement the ad we're going to show in our app. This can be for any ad type, so check out the guides to each of them linked in the description for the one you want to implement. When we get to implementing our ad experiment into our app, we'll just check the value of the remote config parameter to determine if we should show the ad to the user or not. Speaking of implementing the ad experiment, we're at that part of the episode now. Let's look at how we can implement this setup into our app. Okay, so let's start with Google Analytics. So in order to use the power of Google Analytics audiences to segment the users who see ads versus the ones who don't, we'll need to set something that can differentiate the two user groups. One way to do that is to simply log a Google Analytics event for users who have seen an ad, and then create a Google Analytics audience based on users who have triggered that event. We'll then have two audiences ready for deeper comparisons in our Google Analytics reporting tools. One cool thing about how Google Analytics and Google AdMob integrate together is that Google Analytics will automatically log an ad impression event for you whenever a user is shown an ad. That means you don't really need to implement anything on the Google Analytics side. Just adding the SDK to your project is enough to start automatically collecting ad impression events with remote config controlling which users end up seeing an ad. Now, in case you wanted to manually log some other event and create an audience based on that, or if you're just curious to see what it looks like, here it is for Android, iOS, and Unity. In each code snippet, we're manually logging a generic select content event and passing along some event parameters. Now let's see how to create an audience based on a logged event in Google Analytics. So here I am in the Firebase console in the Google Analytics section. So I could just create a new Google Analytics audience here from within the console, but as I mentioned before, there are a lot more advanced Google Analytics features we can use 
if we work in the Google Analytics console. So let me go there instead. Okay, so here I am in the Google Analytics console with the Google Analytics property connected to my Firebase project opened in view. So I'll go ahead and create a new audience by navigating to the Configure and Audiences tab and then clicking on the New Audience button. Then I'll select Create a Custom Audience, call it Ads Users, and as a condition, I'll include users when they've triggered an ad impression event. For the membership duration, which determines how long a user is part of this audience based on the qualifying conditions, the default of 30 days will suit my needs since the 10% of my users who will be seeing ads will consistently be the same users during my evaluation period. So with that, I'll hit save. Okay, with that audience created, we also wanna create an audience that represents all users except the ones who've seen an ad. So we can directly compare the two. In order to do that, I'll go ahead and create another audience and call it the no ads users audience. Now I'll need to first specify an all encompassing condition to represent all users in my app. Maybe something like users who are part of any or neither age groups to represent all my users first. Then we'll add an exclusion group to exclude any users who have seen an ad. Between temporarily excluding or permanently excluding these users, I can choose either option, but I'll choose permanently exclude since the users who see an ad versus those who don't will be consistent throughout my evaluation period and beyond if I decide to roll out the experience more widely. Now for the condition. I'll select whenever an ad impression event is logged and hit save. Okay, now that I have both audiences created, I can use these to compare the two groups when we get to analyzing our results, which I'll do just a bit later. Before that, we need to set up and implement the remote config bits of our solution. In this case, the parameter we're going to create is pretty simple. Basically a Boolean flag to determine whether or not we should show an ad to our users. Let's set that up now. Okay, so I'm back in the Firebase console and I'll scroll down to remote config, then I'll click on add parameter. For the parameter key name, I'll just use show ads and set its default value to false. Now I need to create a conditional value. So I'll click on add value for condition and define a new condition called 10% of users. It'll apply if a user is in a random percentile smaller than or equal to 10% out of my total user group. And now I'll hit create condition. Now I'll set up the value for that condition, which will be true. Then I'll click on add parameter and publish changes. Okay, now we just need to implement and use that remote config parameter in our app code. So the first thing we'll need to do is initialize remote config and configure it to fetch the show ads parameter values we just created. So for Android, this would look like this. First, we get the remote config instance and then use the remote config settings builder to build and configure our settings and then set them. For the minimum fetch interval, which is how often remote config should invalidate its local cache and check for new values, I'm using 12 hours as a time interval. I could probably make it longer since I'm really not expecting to change the values for these show ads parameters during the evaluation period, which might last at least three to four weeks. So once every 12 hours seems like a sensible fetch rate. Next, we'll need to make the call to fetch the remote config parameters from the RC servers and activate them for use in our app. So we've got the fetch and activate call here, and then we add a completion listener, which checks that we're successfully able to fetch and update the remote config parameters. If we were, we can check what the values were for show ads for this app instance, and then based on that, decide whether or not to show the ad to this user. The code to do this on iOS looks very similar. First, we retrieve the remote config instance, then create our remote config settings object to set the minimum fetch interval, and finally set the whole RC settings object back to our remote config instance. Once again, using a fetch rate of once every 12 hours is sensible for this experiment. Next, we'll need to fetch and activate the remote config parameter values. So first, we'll make the fetch call, and if the call succeeds, make the follow-up call to activate the fetched remote config parameter values in our app. If that all goes well, we can now check the value of the show ads parameter and use that to decide whether or not we'll show ads for this user's app instance. For the Unity SDK, the setup looks quite similar too. So you'll get a remote config instance and create a config settings object in a similar way, and then set the minimum fetch interval through a ulong representing the total time in milliseconds. I'm using a time span here to make it a bit more readable and setting the interval to 12 hours. Then we just make the call to set the config settings object, 
which is an async operation in Unity. So we're adding a continue with on main thread callback here to verify that setting the config was successful. And now we can make the call to fetch and activate the remote config parameter values. So that's as simple as just making the call, adding a continuation to handle the result, and seeing if it was successful. After fetching the remote config parameter value, we can check if show ads is true for this user's app instance, and if so, load and show the ad. All right, and now that we've got everything wired up, we're ready to publish the new update to our app users so that 10% get the ad experience, and we can start our evaluation on the user experience. Note that for good measure though, you'll probably want to test out the ad experience both directly without the remote config flag, as well as with the remote config flag by toggling its conditional values to true and setting the minimum fetch interval to zero seconds during development and testing. After you've tested and deployed these changes to your users, you'll need to wait a little while to collect some data and measure the user experience. Once you've waited for say three to four weeks, it's time to analyze the results. Okay, now once again, as in previous episodes, the data we're going to show here is simulated. To thine own self be true. But in this case, we kind of had to go with fake data. But don't worry, this data and the process we're going to use to evaluate it will be similar enough for what you might see in your own experiment. So you can go ahead and apply the same methodology. So what I will do is go back to the Google Analytics console and take a look at the most important metric we care about user retention. So I'll navigate here to the user retention reports to take a look. Now here I can get a view of what user retention looks like for my new users and returning users, as well as see what my user retention looks like for my day one and day seven user cohorts. Now to get to what I'm really interested in, and that's to compare the user retention trends between the users in my app who have been shown ads and those who haven't. So I'll click on add a comparison here, and then in the dimension to include, select audience name, and then select my ads users audience that I created earlier, and then hit apply. Now the user retention data for the users who are shown ads is displayed in the report. But I'm not done yet. Next, I'll add a second comparison for the no ads users, for the users who weren't shown ads so that I can compare the two groups. So I'll go ahead and select add new comparison and select the no ads users audience I created earlier and click on apply. And there we go. We can now compare retention for the two user groups side by side. So up top is the number of users in each group and the ads users audience is about 10% of the no ads users audience, which is what I expected. What's more important is just below that. And that is the retention rates between the two groups. If I look at the graphs, I can see that they look quite similar for the two groups. And on the same days, the rates are either similar or in some cases, even higher in the ads users audience. That can be because I'm showing rewarded ads and gifting some virtual currency to my ads users group. This is actually the best possible result of the evaluation because it means that we can roll out ads to the rest of our users. And in fact, doing so might even lead to higher retention rates. That said, it's probably a good idea to let this experiment run a bit longer before deciding to roll out ads globally, or maybe increase the percentage of users who are part of the ads users group to something like 25% or higher to get a second reading before going all the way. Also, in addition to comparing the ads user groups to the no ads user group by retention, there are probably other important behaviors we want to compare to. And Google Analytics has some tools that can help. For example, let's say one thing I really care about in my game is how often users level up and the conversion rate between users who open the game for the first time, go on to start a session, and then play long enough to level up in the game. Now let's say I want to see if showing ads to users has any impact on these conversion rates. And I want to compare those rates to users who weren't shown any ads. Well, if I go back into Google Analytics and open up the funnel analysis technique, I can do just that. Here, I've already created a funnel that captures that user journey. Now, if I want to compare how this funnel will look like for my two ads and no ads user groups, I can just add a new dimension below called audience name which will add a breakdown of the data for each step of the funnel in the table right here. After applying it, I can see what the data looks like for each user audience, including my ads users group and my no ads users group. 
and I can compare the data as well to make sure it matches my expectations before deciding to roll out my ad experiences further. There are plenty more funnels and other tools available in Google Analytics to do deeper analysis, like the segment overlap technique and other useful reports. If you want to learn more about how to use these Google Analytics features for your Firebase project, check out the Firebase Developer's Guide to Google Analytics video from our last Firebase Live event. It covers a lot more use cases and provides a walkthrough of some of GA's advanced exploration tool features. So what do you think? Are you going to try showing some ads to your users? After all, it is better to have shown ads and lost than to never have shown ads at all. Uh, that definitely is not the quote, and not even the same author, actually. Eh, close enough. English literature was never a strong subject for me, but helping you optimize your app revenue using Firebase is. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please like, subscribe, or share to let us know. And tune in for the next episode, where we look into how to balance your app revenue between your ad revenue and your in-app purchase revenue, too. This will be a great one if you offer both in-app purchases and ad experiences in your app, but you're not sure when you should direct your users to a purchase experience, ad experience, or both. Until then, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.